<laughs> is Elvis alive? Judge for yourself by calling the 900 number on your television screen. Hear what could be the incredible Elvis phone call. Listen to the newest and longest recording ever, just released from the original taped conversation purportedly of Elvis recorded about four years after the 16th of August, 1977. Call 1-900-909-ELVIS. Call now. Experience what may be the most shocking story of our time. People ask me all the time where I'm living. And naturally, I can't say, but uh, it's a good place to hide. And there was an island that I had learned about a long time ago. And uh, I guess I always knew that someday I'd probably have to use it. Anyway, I, I must have spent a year on the island. I started traveling all over the world. And it's been, uh, it's been enjoyable, but it's, it's been a constant battle of uh, growing beards and, and this and that to, to keep from being recognized. And I guess, I guess about two years ago, uh, I went to Europe which is uh, something I, I, I've always wanted to do, something I've wanted to do for a long time. I realize that sooner or later, it's probably going to end. You know, I, I hate to think that it's going to end, but I know sometimes the secret has got to be let out. If it hadn't been for getting involved in, in what I'm involved in now, you know, things as such, maybe it would have been different. Well, I think that last statement speaks for itself. But, Maria, let me ask you about some of the other things that we heard. Prior to his death, had Elvis ever spent a year on an island, any island? No, he didn't. He never spent a year away from the public eye. He was in, in the public eye all the time. We would have heard about it. Elvis is alive. Prepare yourself. We have Gail's tape of Elvis, her purported tape of Elvis. I want you to listen to a portion of that tape right now. After about a year, uh, I started missing the people and entertaining. I mean, I've been entertaining people in the better part of my life, and it, it's very hard to stop doing something that you've been doing that long. And I, uh, I started traveling all over the world, and it's been, uh, It's been a constant battle of growing beers and, and this and that to, to keep on being recognized. Gail, where did that tape come from? All right, that tape again was around before I got it. Um, a woman had brought it to me. She Have asked you done me. anything to authenticate it? Yes, I sent it to L.H. Williams of the Houston Police. That report is in the book. In fact, I sent your show the spectrographs of L.H. Williams when he compared that tape with known tapes of Elvis Presley. Do you believe, either you or the Major, that the voice on the tape is indeed Elvis? I, know I believe the it. Tape is Elvis. I had the tape. Kelly down here picked the tape th three years Pardon before. me, excuse me. Show David Darlock in the front row. He's a psychic entertainer from Florida. David says that he was hired to be the voice of Elvis on what he thought would be a fictional tape. Stand up, David. Is the voice on Gail Brewer Giorgio's tape, in fact, your voice? Yes, it is. Under what circumstances did you record that tape? 
I was hired by what I thought to be an Elvis fan club organization. They paid me $125 for four weeks to produce both an album and a monologue tape, which Gail Brewer Giorgio has the monologue. It had a disclaimer on it. It was removed. And people have been producing it as Elvis Presley being alive. Can we compare your voice and send it to sure. L.A. Can Williams? you? You are a psychic entertainer. You can uh, channel. Let me hold your guitar. Would you hold it for him? Can you summon up that voice of Elvis? I will try. Can I borrow your watch? Would you stand over here? I'll stand over here. Please, if I may. Here, I'll just hold it down here if you can see it. Can you see the, wa the watch is moving? The watch is moving. It is running? It's running, yeah. Think of Elvis. Think of him. Concentrate on him. Think of Elvis. Can you see it? My watch stopped, folks. Your watch has stopped. Hang on to that. Listen to me. It, um, it started when I was just a baby. You know, just, just an infant baby. I learned a lot about music. I learned how to play the guitar. And that's the type of thing that I've been doing a lot. But um, in the past 12 years, and there's been a lot of times that people believe that I'm still living, and naturally that's not true. And as far as growing beers and this and that to keep from being recognized, I kept a secret. I kept a secret deep down inside. And it's not pressed between any pages like it found a place to hide. Thank you. What about the David Darlock. What about the this is, excuse me, Major. This is a copy of the agreement made this 13th day of April, 1981. By and between, there are two other names and David Dorlock, whereas, 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 this is the contract for him to record the eternally Elvis audio cassette that has been the basis of Gail Brewer Giorgio selling tens of millions of copies of her paperback book. He it. They get to respond. We take a break first. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Bourse here in the center of a, the lovely city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We are very pleased to be here. Gail, you just heard some very strong allegations. Yes. The allegation is nothing more nor less, I want to be very clear about this, than fraud. Are you either willingly or unwillingly, intentionally or unknowingly, a part of a massive fraud? No. In fact, I will, if you will give me a tape of your show with that gentleman, you can take the tape that is with a book. We sent it to the Houston police, voice ID. I did not have a group of people in a room raising their hands. In fact, Major Bill had the tape long before I did. Many of the fans did. It is not my tape. I only sent it off. Major and we Gail. Dee Presley, you were crying when David was doing his Elvis channeling or impersonation. Why? Because there is a similarity. Also, I understand that the tape was released only as a similarity that was brought out from Michigan on the Larry King Show. Have you ever phoned me, David? Have you ever phoned the prison? No, ma'am. And what fan club then did you at one time speak with? Perhaps it's the same fan club the organization, that has quoted me. The organization that hired me yes. and paid me $125 a week Who was the organization? for four weeks is yep. called Eternally Elvis yes. Incorporated. I see. And it was two people that hired me to do this, yes. and they told me it was going to be sold just at the fan clubs as a fictional account. I see. And what happened from there is history. Yes, I appreciate your participating. Why, have you been hurt in some way? Yes, Geraldo, since this has come out, remember the one phone call, but I said a weird phone call, Geraldo. They were coming out of the woodworks. This plot started taking form, actually, right away after Elvis's death. This is nothing new to me. The voice that came on the phone, similarity. Remember, that's what I said, 
discarded, of course, knowing that it was somebody out for to make a buck. This also, is uh, Paul Lichter. Excuse me, D. He wrote. Uh, he's written ten Elvis books. It's thanks to him that we had uh, the Elvis turquoise phoenix jumpsuit at the beginning of the program. He has extensively researched the life of the man. I wonder if you have any connection with this whole story, Paul. Well, only that uh, when Joe says he was there, he was there. And I know what I saw in the coffin, and it was Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley is dead. Uh, I'd like to also state that I'd spoken with Gail on the phone, and I've watched her on many interview shows say that you're only asking questions. But the statement you made to me was that Elvis is alive, Elvis was at your home, Elvis gave you a watch, and Elvis wanted to see me. Now, that doesn't sound like um, we you're were, asking questions. Okay. That sounds like a statement to me. No. Um, in my book, I talk about Orion, the singer, Jimmy Ellis. There was times, in fact, Orion himself has admitted to me that there are two Orions. We don't wait, know wait, who wait, the other Wait, 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 don't Who's Orion? Well, that's was Elvis in your house when you talked to no, Paul? I don't know if it was Elvis Presley in my house. Uh, at were the you time, home? No. You have to read the whole story. Now, this is way... <laughs> we can't even get into the Orion thing because you just told yeah, me not to. Right. I think that... Um, I, I believe in my heart that uh, Elvis is dead, but I can certainly uh, understand why uh, they can set up a situation where he did die and uh, have to go away somewhere because they, p the people would have never let him retire. That's right. But he wasn't ready to retire. Like James Dean, when he had that terrible car crash and they said that he was so awfully disfigured that he could never appear in public, so they faked his death. Why? Can it just be the way it was? Why can't a man just have a fatal illness brought on in part by his poor physical condition and his substance abuse? Um, Is it that, you know why? Maybe, maybe it's that the king of rock and roll deserved the more noble conclusion. Maybe that's it. Um, I know it's really painful for his family and friends, but just to end the discussion, why can't they exhume the body and let the world see and put people like these to rest? Maybe the body is not in the place they say it is. That's why the coffin weighed more, because he's not buried there for protection. Oh, I don't know. That's, or D. That, that, that's not, I mean, that's ridiculous. Why put the family through something like that? I like All of these stupid rumors. Ronaldo. I say that Elvis Presley would have never done that to his fans. He loved his fans. Right. And may he rest in peace. <laughs>